Good evening. Welcome to the uh, Northampton City Council uh, meeting to, uh, of November 3rd, uh, 2016. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight, and I will be presiding. And we will go right to public comment, which is our custom. Uh, before we actually determine a quorum and, and <coughs> officially convene, we invite the public to speak on any <coughs> issue uh, with a few caveats. One is this, this looming clock above my head here is the three-minute count, and we ask you to keep your <coughs> comments within those three minutes. Um, we also ask that um, you respect the decorum of the chambers. Well, I know looking at us, you, you, and the words decorum and us don't necessarily correspond, but that it's actually true. We, we do have a modicum of that. And um, that you, you can um, call us out by names because we're public figures, but I would also ask that people be um, circumspect when they speak of individuals who are not public figures because that's, that's uh, defamatory and we don't allow it under our rules. Um, so when I call your name, please step up, state your name and address, and then you're off. And you got three minutes and speak your piece. And first up, we have uh, Wayne Fiden. We're pleased that we have two fellows from a, a U.S. State Department fellowship program, one from Thailand and one from Malaysia, who are in Northampton for about a month, um, just sort of interviewing sustainability people around the valley, in city government, academia, and, and other towns <coughs> near here. I just wanted to introduce you to them. You, you've seen them in some committees, so while they're here, we've really, they've been a pleasure to have so, uh, you. Yeah. Hi, my name is Angie. I'm from Malaysia. So I am here. Uh, we are the ICMA International Fellows under the Environment Sustainability Program. So we are here with Wayne to learn about the Northampton's way towards the sustainable development. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Angie. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Black Sulich from Sweden, from Thailand. I'm currently doing a research at the Asian Institute of Technology in Bangkok, and my research is about urban environmental management. So it's been an honor to meet you guys here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and actually, what I, another rule that I just violated was I responded and said something. That was the thing in, the, in public comment. <laughs> the counselors are, are constrained from speaking. <coughs> you don't address questions to us because we won't be able to answer them. You're welcome to address them, but just when we sit there mute, uh, don't get cranky. Uh, next up, Liz Friedman, please. Good evening. I'm Liz Friedman, 23 Prospect Avenue, um, Northampton. Um, I am here to sp speak about the Pregnant Workers Fairness Resolution. I am the, uh, the chair of the Pregnant Workers Fairness Coalition across Massachusetts. Um, and I wanted to specifically thank Jean Gina Louise Scarra and Elisa Klein, as well as the entire council for bringing this resolution forward for your consideration. Um, I want to highlight that you will be the first municipality in Massachusetts to seek a resolution in support of the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act. I think this is highly significant. This um, act was born in uh, Western Mass, Mother Woman, my organization has been leading the way with Representative Ellen Story, and so I think it's very befitting to bring this, um, for you to bring this forward and to offer your support or consider that. Um, I also wanted to let you know that there are organizations across the state as well as, well as across the region that are supporting this legislation at the state level, including the ACLU of Massachusetts, Massachusetts Now, AFL-CIO, Arise for Social Justice, Massachusetts Massachusetts Jobs with Justice, the Massachusetts Employment Lawyers Association, and ACOG, the, um, the OB, uh, OBGYN Association of Massachusetts. The Pregnant Workers Fairness Act provides protections to pregnant workers who need basic accommodations during the course of normal pregnancy. So this would not be folks who would be covered by the Americans with Disabilities Act because disabilities during pregnancy would be covered by that part of the law under the ADA. This is uh, women, um, working mothers, who, because of normal pregnancy, need additional supports like a stool to sit on, a bottle of water, extra bathroom breaks, things of that nature. Very simple things. But unfortunately, um, 
women are being fired and terminated. While when I started this, I thought I would find very, very few cases of this, I have been amazed at how many cases in Western Massachusetts I have found. I have found women who have shared their stories and experiences from Westfield, Holyoke, Northampton, Amherst, um, and some other places as well in the Western Massachusetts area. Now, what's interesting to me about this bill is, well, one is over 40% of moms are breadwinners in the state of Massachusetts, and 80% work until their eighth or ninth months of pregnancy. So we're talking about a significant number of workers who are impacted by this. And while you would think this is a no-brainer, I certainly thought it was a no-brainer because we've all been trained since we were very young by our mothers and fathers and per parents that we um, should stand up when we see somebody in need. We're on the bus and a pregnant woman comes on and she's in her eighth month of pregnancy and you stand up and you give her your seat. So why do we need to legislate this? There are folks who unfortunately don't do the right thing and aren't doing the right thing. Um, so we trust that this is a win-win for business in Massachusetts. It's low cost, it decreases litigation, it's received bipartisan support nationally in over 14 states and municipalities. It's pro-business, it helps employers retain employees. <laughs> and can I say my very last? Say your it's last, really by all brief. means, Liz, yeah. And working moms don't have to choose, when you pass this legislation at the state level and with your support, Working moms won't have to choose between the job they need and the baby they love. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Lisa Newman, please. Good evening, city councilors. Thank you for having me here today to show my support for the Northampton. Lisa, Pardon I'm sorry. Can can you give us your name and address, please? Okay, sorry, I'm Lisa Newman, and I'm 27 Ward Avenue. Thank you for having me here today to show my support for the Northampton Pregnant Workers Fairness Act and for hearing my personal story. Um, my name is Lisa Newman and I worked at Smith College from November 2005 to, to May 2012 as an application system analyst in the IT department. In May 2006, I filed a Title IX complaint with the Department of Education Office of Civil Rights. This complaint describes in over 150 pages of very detailed, meticulous documentation, the alleged pregnancy discrimination and retaliation and denial of reasonable pregnancy accommodations <coughs> that occurred to me for over six years. First, I want to tell you how I came to be here. In July 2015, I gave testimony at the Massachusetts State Hearing in support of the Massachusetts Pregnant Workers Fairness Act. This testimony is available in public records. When I looked around the room at the legislators and constituents at that meeting, and I saw the concern and the care that they had in their faces, I knew at the very moment I had to speak out and tell my story, that my voice matters, that every voice matters, everyone come, can come together and help make pregnant workers um, have reasonable pregnancy accommodations prevent, and prevent pregnancy discrimination. I wanna read you a little bit from that testimony that I gave at the State House. And this testimony is in the um, Title IX complaint as part of the alleged pregnancy discrimination. I faced pregnancy discrimination retaliation so severe that I was afraid to ask for accommodations that I needed to maintain a healthy pregnancy. The, discrimin the discrimination retaliation went for six years spanning multiple pregnancies. With no support from HR, even after multiple attempts to contact them and many complaints raised, and coworkers who were too scared to speak up on my behalf, I was left alone to bear the discrimination. I was told that I could not take bathroom breaks during meetings when my from my supervisor when she was present in meetings. She forced me to sit in front of a clock so I could always look at the clock to tell what time the meetings were so I would never be late. I stopped attending physical therapy out of fear of losing my job. I tried every avenue I could think of, every administrator I could think of going to at, at Smith, and what I encountered was further, victim, further victimizing me in retaliation and nowhere to go to. Um, and lastly, I do want to say real quick that um, Smith has stated in the um, Boston Globe and the Hampshire Gaz uh, Gazette that they did not receive this complaint, and that's a false statement. Smith College requested to see the complaint, and at my permission, the Boston Globe reporter sent the complaint to Smith College on October 20th. The complaint was sent to the Smith College Public Relations Department the day before the Boston Globe reporter spoke to the Smith College um, PR spokesman. As stated, in an email from the Globe Reporter, I deal with the PR department. They have it. Yes, they're free to say they requested it. I sent it to them, and they have it. Smith College <laughs> investigate. 
and take and we need to um, sorry okay if you finish your thought um, we need to have we need to hold Smith accountable for their actions thank you thank you very much um, Jane and I'm sorry I can't read your last name You'll, you'll correct me then. Hi, my name is Jane Lattice. I live at 45 Spring Street in Florence. Um, I want to thank Gina, Louise, and Lisa for um, everyone and everyone else who's working towards this resolution and the bill on a larger scale. So I am here also to support the Pregnant um, Workers Fairness Act. I am a resident of Northampton. I am also a nurse midwife who takes care of women in this community. Um, and I just want to review a couple of things. Um, normal pregnancy is not a disability or illness. Um, it's, there is nothing that should prevent a woman from working up until the day she gives birth if she so chooses. Um, reasonable accommodations, I don't even think we need to be here discussing it because they are reasonable. Uh, women who are pregnant have 50% increased blood volume. That makes them need have swollen feet. They um, have increased kidney clearance rates, so they need to pee more often. They need to have bathroom breaks. Um, women should, who are pregnant need to limit lifting. That is the same case for anyone who has a temporary um, injury. They need to use the bathroom more frequently. So do older people. They get swollen feet, like I said, as do a lot of other people in the community. And my take on this is that um, having this Fairness Act, this resolution passed, or this bill passed would eliminate barriers to continuing to work, and that's beneficial on so many levels. Um, obviously, it's important financially. I've seen countless, countless women who have had to leave their positions as a result of employers being unwilling to modify their job expectations. This puts, this puts a housing and insurance into question at a very stressful time for their family. Um, it's healthy for the family unit for women to maintain their job. Um, there is a lot of a stress and anxiety that's related to lost wages. It can be very harmful for the family unit. Um, it's beneficial for a woman's mental health to keep active, to stay stimulated, um, to be a contributing member of the workforce if that's what she chooses to do. Um, I also think it sets a good example for the next generation, um, for my patient's children and for society as a whole to see um, what parent and gender roles are about and what society's expectations and assumptions are about pregnant women. Uh, I work every day to reassure women that pregnancy is normal and it shouldn't just be coming from me and my coworkers. It should be coming from the community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, that's all I have signed up, but if anyone's interested in speaking, you're welcome to. Does anyone else want to say something? Okay. I'm going to ask the clerk to call the clerk, oh, the administrative assistant to call the roll. Sorry. Councilor Sarney. Present. Councilor White. Here. Councilor Klein. Here. Councilor <coughs> Clark. Present. Councilor Dodd. Here. Councilor Schiff. Here. We have a quorum, just barely. Um, we have, uh, we're down three councilors tonight. Uh, Councilor Bidwell is absent with the excuse as is Councilor Murphy. Uh, we're, uh, so fortunately we don't have any anything tricky pending because we might have quorum issues relative to uh, final votes, but we're good. Um, so I'm going to start off, uh, we have no scheduled public hearings, uh, recognition and one minute announcements by counselors. Anyone? Um, I just, I have here in front of me an invitation from the Foreign Civic and Business Association about their, um, their holiday parade, which will assemble at Trinity Row Park at 9.30 a.m. on Saturday, November 26th. It begin, the parade will begin promptly at 10. Uh, the community, as well as the association, would appreciate our participation. That's to the counselors, but also the public should be apprised of this. Actually, it's a, it's a great little event. It's, Florence does love a parade. I think Florence puts on a parade every, every three weeks at this point. But it's great. It's, <laughs> So, and this is a great one. So, um, <coughs> any other announcements? Okay, well, this meeting is going to be short. Um, Your Honor, nothing? He's got bupkis. Okay, so let's cut to the chase. First up, uh, the first item is a resolution. That's item 16.191, a resolution in support of Bill, House Bill uh, 1769, Massachusetts Pregnant Workers Fairness Act, and this is a first reading. Uh, 
ask for a motion to put it on the floor first. Make a motion. Okay. Uh, the resolution. Uh, this is uh, upon the recommendation of Councillor Dina Louise Shara and Councillor Elisa F. Klein. This is a resolution supportive of the House Bill 1769, the Massachusetts Pregnant Workers Fairness Act, and here come the whereases. Whereas the City of Northampton has asserted support for fair and just labor and work practices in Northampton Living Wage Resolution back in 2009 and the Right to Organize Resolution in 2012. And whereas the City of Northampton has affirmed its non-discrimination policy that no person shall unjustly discriminate against any person belonging to a protected category, including age, ancestry, or national origin, color, creed, family, or marital status, gender identity, genetic information, mental or physical ability, race, religion, sex, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, or veteran status, and relative to any essential public matter involving goods, services, or access that are generally available to all people, including education, employment, health care, housing, municipal services, and public accommodations. And whereas the City of Northampton respects civil and human rights and recognizes that pursuant to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights adopted by the United Nations in 1948, Article 23, uh, 1, quote, everyone has the right to work, to free choice of employment, to just and favorable conditions of work, and to protection against unemployment, close quote. And whereas the United States Pregnancy Discrimination Act in 1978, which had its 38th anniversary this week, and the United States Family and Medical Leave Act in, from 1993, protect pregnant women against discrimination and address temporary inability to perform duties due to medical conditions related to pregnancy or childbirth, neither act grants a clear right to reasonable temporary workplace modifications for pregnant women. And whereas, by its nature, pregnancy is a temporary physical condition, workers with disabilities include temporary disabilities, are protected by law, and must be provided with reasonable accommodations, but under current state and federal law, pregnant women who do not suffer from a disability do not have that equal protection. And whereas House Bill 1769, the Massachusetts Pregnant Workers Fairness Act, currently being considered by the Massachusetts State Legislature, would require employers to provide, quote, reasonable accommodations, close quote, for a job applicant or an employee related to pregnancy and childbirth, if requested by the applicant or employee, or, quote, unless the employer can demonstrate that the accommodation would impose an undue hardship on the employer's program, enterprise, or business, close quote. And whereas U.S. Senator Bob Casey of Pennsylvania introduced of Senate Bill 1512, Pregnant Workers Fairness Act in June 2015, co-sponsored by Massachusetts U.S. Senators Ed Markey and Elizabeth Warren, which also requires, quote, reasonable accommodations, close quote, for pregnant workers. And whereas such accommodations include, but are not limited to, more frequent breaks, provision of seating, allowance for adequate hydration, and temporary transfer to a less strenuous or hazardous position. And whereas without such accommodations, some pregnant women have to choose between their employment and their health. And whereas one in five discrimination charges made by women in the United States are associated with pregnancy, House Bill 1769 will provide needed clarity to the law for employers and workers, reducing filed complaints and litigation, which will be beneficial to all parties. And whereas allowing pregnant women to re remain in their jobs is vital, for financial, is vital for the financial well-being of many families and is beneficial for the economic health and development of the City of Northampton. And whereas the City of Northampton is committed to supporting families, employers, and businesses within the City and recognizes all par parties as cornerstones of our community. Now therefore, be it resolved that the City of Northampton, Massachusetts supports House Bill 1769, the Massachusetts Pregnant Workers Fairness Act, urges the Massachusetts Senate and House of Representatives and the Governor of the Commonwealth to adopt it in a timely manner to offer equal protection to pregnant women in Massachusetts and be further resolved that the City, of North, uh, City Council of Northampton, Massachusetts supports Senate Bill 1512 and urges its passage in the United States Congress and be further resolved that we commend and support State Representative Peter Cocott for being one of the petitioners of House Bill 1769 and Senators Ed Markey and Elizabeth Warren for being co-sponsors of the Senate Bill uh, 1512. 
and be a further result. <coughs> Administrative assistant to the City Council should cause a copy of this resolution to be sent to U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren, U.S. Senator Ed Markey, Governor Charles Baker, Attorney General Maura Healy, Treasurer Deborah Goldberg, Senate President Stanley Rosenberg, Speaker of the House Robert DeLeo, State Representative Peter Cocott, and co-sponsors of the House Bill 1769, State Representatives Ellen Story, Joan Lovely, and Dave Rogers. There. Um, I will defer to the petitioners, the sponsors, too. Okay. Do you want to speak to that? Sure. Um, I want to thank everyone who uh, came and spoke in support of the resolution, resolution tonight. Um, I want to thank our local organization, Mother Women, and, um, and their program director, Liz Friedman, for her dedication and leadership on this issue um, and her work with us on this resolution. The Massachusetts Pregnant Workers Fairness Act was introduced by Representative Ellen Story and Amherst in January 2015. And our representative, Peter Cocott, is one of the 62 co-sponsors. <clears throat> I actually spoke to Representative Cocott this evening and he expressed his support for the resolution and his gratitude for bringing it forward as we also express our gratitude to him for supporting the bill um, and being a co-sponsor. <clears throat> so, shortly after, after its introduction, Councillor Klein and I began talking about how we could support this bill. The bill is presently in the Way House Ways and Means Committee and there's hope that it will pass in an informal session. So it is at this moment that we bring this resolution forward for our consideration, and we hope that Northampton will join the wide support the bill has, um, which uh, Ms. Friedman also told us many of them. I'll also add that Bay State Health is, is also has expressed um, their support and uh, spoke um, on this. So, um, and as Ms. Friedman also noted, we are proud that um, we would be the first municipality in the Commonwealth to stand up and assert our support for pregnant workers and for the strong and remarkable work that's been done around this bill and for the common sense and reasonable accommodations afforded by it. Not only is this law beneficial to pregnant women and their families, it's good for business. Reasonable accommodations are things, as we've all heard, such as giving someone who stands behind a register um, or behind a counter for hours, a stool to sit on, um, or allowing a pregnant worker to carry water with her, or assistance lifting boxes over a certain weight, um, or a temporary reassignment if someone works with harmful chemicals. These accommodations are often low or no cost, and the bill includes a provision to ensure that they do not, quote, uh, they, quote, do not impose an undue hardship, end quote, on the employer. When workers can stay in their jobs, it is good for everyone. When pregnant women can continue working and supporting our fa their families, it helps their health and economic security, but it also helps businesses and the economy. Staff turnover in business is costly and time consuming. When pregnant women know they can legally ask for the accommodations that they need to be able to work safely and comfortably through their pregnancies, they are not faced with choosing between their needed employment or their health. And employer's obligations are clarified under this law, reducing the need for complaints and mediation. 18 other states have passed similar laws. California passed their law 16 years ago and has been providing reasonable accommodations for pregnant workers since then. The effect of the law in California has been studied by the organization Legal Rights Advocates, and they found that accommodations that have been sought are generally modest and easily met by employers. They also found that while in this time period, pregnancy discrimination charges filed with the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission increased dramatically by 54% under just the federal law, but in California, with, with the law that supplements that federal law, they actually had a decrease and litigation over those complaints had also decreased. So the rest of the country went up quite dramatically, but California actually went down. So in California, not only has this been shown to be solid law that helps pregnant women and their families, it's been proven to help employers and the economy as well. <coughs> the majority of pregnant women in the U.S. work, and many of those women want to and or need to work until the end of their pregnancy, and they absolutely can do so, as we heard from Ms. Uh, Lattice. I'd like to say we'd be able to, I'd, I'd like to be able to say that we've come a long way in how we view women. Um, it's a little bit tough at this moment in time for me to be able to say that, though I'm hopeful that these last few months have drawn back a curtain on the everyday misogyny and sexism that we experience, and that will lead to change. But I do feel that we can say, as Ms. Lattice also mentioned, that we have come a long way in how we view pregnancy. Pregnancy is not an illness, pregnant women are not sick, and pregnant women are strong and capable. In fact, there is no one more powerful than a pregnant woman. But it is a significant physiological experience, and there is no reason we shouldn't recognize and appreciate that and provide equal protection under the law 
by allowing external accommodations at work as a woman's body is internally accommodating her pregnancy. And I can say that we've come a short, small way in this country in terms of parental leave. We're still woefully behind many places in the world that offer much more time and support around birth. Without this law and the needed accommodations, women often need to start taking their leave while still pregnant. Leave time that a woman has to take before the birth of her child is time she doesn't have with the baby after the birth. Providing accommodations to pregnant women in their workplace is common sense and basic human decency. It's something I hope we can all get behind, and I know that most employers do. So this just adds the clarity for the few who need some guidance. I hope and believe this is something that Northampton can support and that we can add our voice to those urging the passage of the Massachusetts Pregnant Workers Fairness Act. I believe it reflects our values as a community. It fits with our support of businesses and employers. It fits with our support of workers and fair work practices. It fits with our belief in civil <laughs> and human rights and our anti-discrimination policy. And it fits with our support of women's rights in general and support of women in the workforce in Northampton in particular. So I thank the council for considering this and I hope that it can have your support. Councilor Klein, did you want to say anything? Um, I just have a, I hope I won't uh, kind of repeat what's been said. Maybe it will be a reiteration if I do a little bit. Um, the Massachusetts Pregnant Fair, uh, Workers Fairness Act is good for workers, women, children, and families, and it is good for businesses. I know that I personally want to patronize and be engaged with businesses and organizations that I know are treating preg pregnant workers with fairness. And I know that Northampton's residents want to as well. Uh, most businesses, as has been stated, already provide accommodations for pregnant workers, but I want to be sure that all businesses do and that they can learn from the Northampton Pregnant Workers Fairness Resolution and the state legislation as well. Um, in 1960, 70% of families had at least one parent at home full time. Today, that percentage has flip-flopped, and 70% of children are growing up in families that are headed by either a single parent or two working parents. Yet to this day, pregnant workers are pushed out of their jobs when all they would have needed was a simple, minor accommodation or two to remain employed and to maintain a healthy and comfortable pregnancy. It's estimated that each year over 250,000 pregnant workers are pushed out of their jobs when all they would have needed to stay in them is a minor accommodation or two. Um, workers in low wage and physically demanding jobs such as retail, health care, factory jobs, they're at increased risk to be denied minor accommodations in their workplaces when pregnant. Accommodations, <coughs> as has been said, are as basic as permission to sit during a shift. You know, if you think about a cashier in a store who stands for an eight-hour, ten-hour shift, um, taking extra bathroom breaks or being relieved from lifting heavy objects, as a few folks have mentioned. Um, these are workers who are more likely to have less bargaining power in their jobs. Um, they're people who are less likely to qualify for FMLA, Family and Medical Leave Act. They're less likely to be able to find replacement income if they lose their jobs. Um, they're less likely to have access to temporary disability insurance through their jobs. And they're less likely to have a financial cushion if they do lose their jobs. This means that the workers who can least afford to lose their jobs are actually at highest risk to lose them when they're pregnant. Um, that's why calling for a Pregnant Workers Fairness Act and our resolution is addressing, they're addressing issues of class and race as well. And I think that's a really significant piece of certainly my commitment to this. This resolution supports state legislation that grants something so basic that when Councillor Sharon and I um, initially began to do research around the PWFA, the Pregnant Workers um, Fairness Act, I found it so astounding and disappointing to discover that we haven't had these laws in place for decades to ensure the one thing that the PWFA calls for, which is reasonable and temporary workplace modifications. How can we not, as a society, want to ensure the safe and comfortable pregnancy of women? How can we not ensure that pregnant women can continue to work while they're pregnant so that they may support or help to support their families? 
If we call ourselves a community and a society that values babies, children, women, and families, how can we not do everything possible to allow mothers to be, to have reasonable and temporary accommodations while pregnant? Um, besides basic issues of fairness, I'd also like to address the economic and public health impact um, uh, or justifications actually for passage of a Pregnant Women's uh, Workers Fairness Act. Almost half of the US workforce is made up of women and 75% of those women will be pregnant at some point during their employment. Um, if they and their families are faced with the economic insecurity that could result from them losing their jobs, their financial struggles have resounding negative implications for the economy overall, as Councillor Shera um, referred to. Um, further, providing accommodations for pregnant workers is crucial to both maternal and infant health. Pregnant workers who are denied basic accommodations are essentially working under unhealthy or dangerous conditions that could put their health at risk, their infant's health at risk, their pregnancy at risk. Um, and a 2015 report by the Nashville-based organization A Better Balance that um, we were in consultation with about this resolution says that a clear right to accommodation not only ensures better health outcomes for women and infants, but reduces health care costs, thus supporting our economy. Um, I just want to say a thank you, too. When Councillor Sharon and I um, read about the Massachusetts Massachusetts Pregnant Workers Fairness Act being introduced in the State House, and it was about a year and a half ago, maybe more. Um, little did I realize personally that we have this incredible expertise in our very um, pioneer valley. Um, Mother Woman and uh, Liz Friedman, who's the program director there, are a national organization, but we're lucky to have them here, um, that are that uh, advocates for policies that are good for mothers, mothers-to-be, and families, and promotes the leadership and resilience of mothers and mothers-to-be. Um, and under the leadership of Liz, um, the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act has come to the point that it's at in our state house, and we're just very lucky to have had you to consult with Liz, so thank you so much for that. Um, and I really appreciate having worked with Councilor Shara on this. It's, it's uh, been, um, a learning experience for me to realize where we are with something that seemed to me to be such a no-brainer as um, Ms. Friedman called it before. So I, I really hope that my fellow counselors will support this. Thank you. Other comments, discussion, debate? Councilor Labarge. Yes. I wish that I had this protection way back. Um, I want to thank you all for coming up and speaking tonight. Um, I think this is excellent. And I also feel that not people with who are pregnant with disability, but people who don't have that disability should be shared equally. There's no question about that. This definitely is a civil rights, it's a human rights issue. And um, how can I, as a city councilor, born and raised in this city say no to a resolution like this. I myself have heard of incidences that have occurred with pregnant girls working in factories just locally years ago. And I think this is, needs to be done. It is in the State House, and I know for a fact this will pass. And I am very honored and very pleased that our city of Northampton is the first municipality. And I think we've opened the doors, and it's a wake-up call for all the other municipalities to come forth and join us. Thank you, thank you very much. Any other comments? Oh. <clears throat> well, I just want to thank my fellow counselors and um, the folks from Mother Woman uh, for bringing this forward. Um, it's a very important issue. And I appreciate especially the reference in the, um, in the resolution to Northampton's practice now with the right to organize, the living wage resolution in um, 2009 and then the right to organize resolution. We've demonstrated that we do care about issues of workplace fairness and justice. And it, um, it seems to follow that this would be not only you know within our purview, but um, we're in a unique position 
having advocated so strongly for worker issues and, and other resolutions to lead, lead the way with this, and I appreciate that. So thank you. Council O'Donnell. I, I don't have much to add to um, what I think were quite um, eloquent descriptions and arguments for this resolution. Um, I also would like to thank the sponsors, uh, Councilor Scherer and Councilor Klein. And I would just be very proud if Northampton uh, adopted this resolution and we were the first community in the Commonwealth. Um, I think even bringing this forward is an example of why resolutions like this are very valuable and we debate them. Um, I mean, clearly, for all the reasons described, there, there's a, a direct and obvious benefit to the citizens of Northampton, but there's a universal benefit, too, beyond geography. And we don't have direct influence over legislation, but this is an example of moral leadership. Um, and that's something I'm very, I'm very grateful for. And um, so I just like to make my support known and thank the sponsors for showing that moral leadership. Okay, so well, by process of elimination, that leaves me. Um, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing because the fact is, uh, both Councilor Shara and Klein alluded to this, and and Liz also said. I mean, it's not only is it a no-brainer, it, it it it's a simple presumption in some level that uh, as, you know the fact that we're coming at this late date to talk about codifying a protection that I would think was part of the warp and weave of every employment and any group that employs people. I mean, is the most human condition. And in fact, without that human condition, there are no other human conditions. <laughs> and it, and it, it seems to me that it's, that I, I, I'm proud that we're doing this. I'm at the same time embarrassed that, as I said, that, that we, we have to be discussing this in 2016. But mm -hmm. as Councilor Shara pointed out, we're discussing a lot of things in 2016 that uh, we seem to pass up previously. So I would say, based on the testimony, but we'll qualify it with a vote, that this stands a good chance of passing. And, um, and I hope that other communities actually sign on to this to encourage the legislature, predominantly male legislature, to understand that we should all be embarrassed and we should own this. So, with that, uh, provided there's no other debate, okay, I'm going to ask the administrator assistant to call the roll. This is the first reading. We do two readings on these things. <coughs> so, if this should pass in first reading, it'll come up again in our next meeting in two weeks uh, to be voted again, just to make sure we really wanted to do this. <coughs> Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Boyd. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. That passes in first reading, and I suspect when it comes up again, there'll be more counselors here to vote for that, and I, I don't imagine that they're going to be any different than us. But thank you all, this, the sponsors and and Mother Woman and uh, anybody else who's actually advocated for this. I appreciate it. Next up, we have... Um, the consent agenda, which includes, this is where this meeting gets sexy, folks, if you want to stick around. <laughs> uh, item 16.193, various appointments to committees. This is to refer to the Committee on City Services. Uh, first, we have the Agricultural Commission. Uh, Stanley Zawalik, or Zawalik, of 538 Sylvester Road in Florence. The, uh, this is a reappointment. Next up will be the Arts Council. Jill St. Kerr of 44 Willow Street in Florence. This and the term starts November 2016, expires June 2019. Conservation Commission. Uh, Jessica Pica of 3 High Street, Florence. The term uh, November 2016 to June 2019. License Commission. Natasha Yakulev of 147 uh, Nonatuck Street in Florence. Term to start 2016 of November. Uh, November of 2016 uh, to June 20, uh, 20, good Lord, that's so far in the future, 2022. 
and that's to fill William Rosen's space. Uh, also, we have uh, 16.194. This is various appointments to committees to refer to the Committee on City Services. The Redevelopment Authority. Uh, Ed Skrosky of 70 Beacon Street in Florence. The term starts March 2016, expires June 2021. That's a reappointment. Patrick <coughs> August, 20 Bridge Road, Florence. The term to start in 2016, expire June 2020. And that's replacing the expired term of the late Joan Welch. Uh, Christopher Kaling of 384 South Street in Northampton, the term to start November 2016 to expire June 2019. That's a replacing the expired term of Hugh Adams. And Royson Quinn of 35 New South Street, number 207 in Northampton, the term to start 2016 expires June 2018. And that's replacing the expired uh, term of David Short. Also approve the submitted permit application from the Northampton Center for the Arts for fireworks display during first night celebration. That's why Penny's sitting here. Uh, and I would ask that you uh, remove item D for, and I'll explain later, but if we can remove that from the consent agenda, if everyone's okay with that. I'll yes, okay. make that motion to remove. All right. Do you want to have a second on that? And I got a second. Okay. All those in favor of removing item D, please say aye. 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 Okay. And then E, that's to approve the minutes of the City Council meeting of October 20th, 2016. Um, can I make just a parliamentary inquiry or just? Yes, please. I, I think we should state what, what item D is, just for the record. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, item D is 16.181. This is the Mobility LLC poll petition request, for, and it was for a referral. And also, parliamentary note, is I don't, we don't need a second to remove consent agenda items, just for the future. Just any, any person can do that. Any old random person can just, just wander in. Oh, okay. and, yeah. Any person who's elected. You may be seated, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Council Shara. Um, should we remove item C, since you've noted Penny is here, and maybe she wants to speak on it? And make it like a separate item, no? Well, it, um, a minute. okay, that's your request, so yeah. Okay, so we can, we'll remove item C, C and D from the consent agenda. No, so, what, so what remains? <laughs> We, we have, uh, so of the remaining articles in the consent agenda, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. So first off, item D, um, asking to have that removed, that's the Mobility LLC poll petition. Um, they, uh, representatives from that group will be meeting with the city solicitor to discuss this is a rather unique proposition and we need to know more information so I would uh, suggest we postpone this until such time the city solicitor feels comfortable with at least us moving motion to propose what's um, what's the motion what was the motion was it to postpone to postpone it that's what you want to do you said postpone Sorry. indefinitely indefinitely is that, or just the next regular meeting? Um, I'm not sure what will come out of the consultations. I mean, we can okay. do we can keep postponing it as we go, but right. maybe to uh, uh, no date certain because we don't uh, know what the disposition of this is. Okay. So, just but it wouldn't mean that it's postponed for the rest of the session. Just to be clear. Right. right. That's that's what I was okay. just considering. That's yeah. that's true. So. Um, That would make sense, yes. um, because the the disposition of this proposal may be completely different than petition request. So I don't know. So that's actually why don't we uh, maybe the motion to consider is to remove the item and to reconsider when it's represented. Okay. So make that motion. That's your motion. Second. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Now look at item C. We have this is to approve the uh, permitted application from Northampton Center for the Arts for fireworks display during the first night celebration. Penny is here. If Penny wants to speak to the. Well, I need to speak on behalf of this. <laughs> <laughs> I like to do this. I like to be on. Uh, please tell me. Um, I'm just here <laughs> to request to make the annual request from the city council to approve our fireworks permit for first night. Wouldn't be first night without fireworks, so. 
hope you all agree. Uh, yeah, any questions about that? I'm glad we separated this because I knew that's pretty much what Penny was going to say. You knew I wanted to <laughs> I didn't think you were going to stand up and protest and say, no, right. we don't want to do fireworks. I'm here in case anybody has any questions. Okay. Did, any questions? As everyone knows, this is actually, as Penny said, this is the exclamation point at the end of the event. Or actually, not at the end of the event, in the oh, middle of the event. Oh, through the event. Yeah. Know. Still the exclamation point. Okay. Well, thank you, Penny. You're welcome. Uh, I'll accept a motion to put this Make on the motion. Floor. Second. Okay. Any discussion on permitting the fireworks? It should be noted that, uh, as per usual, uh, on the application, that the fire department has signed off on this, and this is uh, this has been an annual event that's been very safe. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Permit is granted. Thank you, Penny. We will not have a finance committee meeting tonight. As we don't have a quorum for finance, and we have no uh, business for finance. So, so we'll go into uh, the second readings of what, we've, what we did at the last meeting. This uh, first up, we have to uh, approve appropriations for uh, the recommended did we do CPC. The past, the did I think we did. Yes. Well, we well we, we voted to take the item out, the item D. Did we vote on the consent agenda? I don't have it. Oh, thank you. Good uh, catch. That would have been okay. Move to approve, to approve the consent agenda. Okay, <laughs> the motions are made to approve the consent agenda again in a second. Uh, all those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yep. Okay. I, I'm having a deja vu. Okay. Um, so we, th this is to approve appropriations for the recommended CPC small grants projects, and this will be second reading. Uh, motions made and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, the motion was made by Council LaBarge. Council Down? Does this include? Uh, I'm this, gonna, this confused this, me last time. How does I'm going to list the items. Oh, okay. The, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, Item 16.179 is in order to appropriate $3,000 for the GARE collection, as you recall, at the yes. historic Northampton. And item 16.180, that's in order to appropriate $3,000 for the Pro Brush collection. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion on these items? No. Roll call. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor LeBarge. Yes. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Okay, that passes in second reading. Item 16.186, this is an order to authorize budgetary transfers into workmen, uh, workers' comp insurance. Move to approve. Motion second. second. Discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Yes, so that passes in second reading. Now we're on to orders. Item 16.185, this is in order to suspend parking fees for certain okay. dates in 2016. Sorry, could I make a parliamentary inquiry before then? Yes. So those, the two small grants projects, they both have two separate order numbers. And I don't believe we took them as a group. Right. That's true, I presented them as a group. Right. Uh, but it was uh, okay. We can do we can do them separately. That's fine. Yeah, it was okay. So I, uh, why don't we do that? We'll do uh, start off with item sixteen point one seven nine. That's the order to appropriate three thousand dollars for the Gare garage, uh, the Gare collection. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Are, are you doing them again? Well. <laughs> Yep. And that's what I think uh, Council President was referring to, but then they're broken down into separate, and they have separate numbers as well, except the first one has the same number as the document, the small yes. grants cover letter, so there's just something a little wonky in how it's been. Well, at the last meeting, we took them as a group. We actually had a motion to take them we as a did. group. Right. And okay. And so. They're two separate orders. Right. They are two separate Either orders. Either take them as a group or yes. them separately. 
you know, we're authorizing appropriations, so. Well, well, we did at the last meeting. We took them as a group. I, I understand. Is, is unless someone was someone like to move them as a group? Sure, I have a second. Okay, the two the two items, item sixteen point one eight zero and one seven nine, which Pam already has us listed as voting for, but it's <laughs> it's uh, roll call as a uh, uh, council down. I just know in order to clarify the minutes, I think we could just say that the motion was improperly stated perhaps the first time so this is you know restating it in the correct way maybe that right. clarifies okay. the first vote so this is as a group both items uh when you're ready roll call yes. <laughs> councillor klein yes councillor labar yes councillor o'donnell yes councillor sheriff yes councillor carney yes councillor dwight yes oh okay that passes in second reading. Item back to item 16.185. This is the order to suspend parking fees for certain dates in 2016. Uh, you'll recall this is the mayor's request for um, holiday uh, free parking uh, downtown. For that's and I'll by the way I'll just repeat it's Friday, November 25th, which is known as Black Friday. Uh, Saturday, November 26th, which is Small Business Saturday. Saturday, December 24th, Christmas Eve, and Saturday 31st, uh, uh, December 31st, which is uh, first night. So there's a motion? Motion. A motion second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Uh, item 16.187, in order to impose a lien for cross-connection <laughs> charges and fees that have not been paid by the due date. And this is the second reading. Motion approved for second. Discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Shera? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Uh, now we're into ordinances. This is the uh, proposed ordinances to amend parking regulations on Main Street and Old South Street parking lot. And this is second reading. Um, we have to, once again two items. Item 16.172. This is an ordinance to amend the list of enforcing officers and penalties for non criminal disposition from Chapter 40 5 of the Code Book. Uh, be a second reading. The other item is 16.183, an ordinance relative to bike lanes on Locust Street. This is to refer oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. Yeah, no, no. The, okay, we'll stay with, we won't do lump no. referrals this time. Well, we got a second reading and one's a referral, so. Well, I think, may I? Yeah, I please. Order. I think um, the, the ordinances under A are in the non-bold. That's line. Yeah, so and that's 16.164, 16.165, mm -hmm. and 16.166. Right. And then the other two are separate. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. See the way you have it presented here, Pam? So. Yeah, I do. So, okay. You want to move to I take move. those as a group? You, so the motion's made to move those a group, as a group, and that's item 16.164. Mm -hmm. And 165. 164-16, uh, 165-16, 166, 16-164. Yeah, okay. So that includes the mayor, uh, it also includes the mayor's letter, which we don't need to approve, but the parking meter fee class, uh, the ordinance uh, for the on-street meter zones, um, the metered parking regulations and off-street locations on Old South Street. And okay, and those are and the motions made as a group. Any further discussion on those items? I, can I ask a question? I of, of the mayor. Of uh, may I? Yeah. Sure. Just following up on yeah the kind of typographical yes. question I asked last and, time. And um, I I uh, must say that we were um, unable to quite figure out why it had been written the way it was written. It now says all of Main Street, but then we also have some clarifying language. Um, uh, I, I can't answer that for, for you. We can't quite figure out why it was written that way. 
Um, and so if we can have a little bit more time to do some measuring, we may bring back some corrective language, but I would like to try to That's fine. implement yeah. now. It doesn't substantially change the purpose yeah. of the ordinance. Anyway, exactly. So. Yeah, it's one of those cleanup items okay. we have to. Well, thank you for looking, looking yes. at it. Yes, yes. And, and to refresh everyone's memory about this, the, the, the way um, the zones were established, there were it was kind of a strange descriptor that basically could have, I believe you thought, and I, I agree, that it could have basically included all of Main Street, but it made designations of portions of Main Street that. Right. It would be as if you said every desk of the city council, and then you also said this desk yes. and this desk, and this is just yeah. kind of uh, duplicative. So. Yeah. Well, it's suspenders and belts then. Okay. We'll, and and if, if there does come up, clarifying language or it seems to be necessary I'm sure you'll come before us the only other thing I wanted to point out on this is when you um, more for the public's knowledge that you're gonna pass this tonight on second reading um, and it still requires uh, the mayor's approval and so um, we're, it's gonna we're, I'm gonna probably utilize my full 10-day approval time because we have to now have time to get it to implement it and get the technology all set up and so it's probably not going to take a it's not going to take effect at midnight tonight um, it's going to take effect probably uh, late next week our goal had been to do it prior to um, bag day and so we're going to try to stick with that but so I just wanted people to be aware because you pass it tonight doesn't mean that the changes go into effect um, just just an FYI on that. Will there be uh, some means we, of communicating? We will let people know, and signage will go up, and we'll put out a press release on the exact date. We're just waiting for the um, the programming chips that um, are being tested right now. And so uh, the goal is that sometime between, you know, 10 days from tomorrow, within 10 days of, from tomorrow, we'll be ready to deploy it. Um, and so I would wait to sign the, sign the, approve the actual order until that time. Get that, Stephanie? Yeah. So, anyway. Okay. All righty. Uh, any further discussion or <laughs> points of order or any parliamentary concerns? No. <laughs> okay. Roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sarah? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labar? Yes. Okay. Now, Item 16.117, this is an ordinance to amend the list of enforcing officers and penalties for non-criminal disposition from Chapter 40-5 of the Code Book. Second reading, I'll accept a motion. Move to approve. Make a motion. Uh, motions made and second is, uh, those of you who participated recall, this is essentially a, a cleanup here of something. There were laws that were established and there was no, basically, no means by which those laws could be enforced. And, um, although they were enforced historically, oddly enough, but not prescriptively. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. That passes in second reading. Next up, we have a referral. This is a 16.183. This is an ordinance relative to bike lanes on Locust Street. It's referred to uh, the Committee on Legislative Matters. Move to refer to Legislative Matters. Second. <coughs> Second. Any discussion on the referral? For information, these are the bike lanes that already exist. <laughs> They've been we do. So. I have to say. I, no pressure. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Kudos to Councilor O'Donnell. Time and again, actually, I mean, he. His attention to detail has managed to clear up a lot of things that have been historically ambiguous to be a generous description. So I, I, I appreciate that sentiment. In this case, I can't claim credit for it. The, uh, our traffic engineer, I believe, in the Department of Public Works. So okay. This, so right. who no is kudos to Council. Eight times as meticulous as I am. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is for referral. So all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, oh my, it's not even quite eight o'clock. I have no updates. There's no information requests and there's no new business. So I will accept a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you all very much. See you after the election. <laughs>